Joining us now, National Action Network president and host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. It's really good to have you, as always. Um, let's talk about um, immigration. I read an interesting piece in the Dispatch, and this is by the son of a Pakistani immigrant, immigrants who, who grew up in the Deep South, and he argues it is completely fair to have conversations about how immigration is changing a community, the effects it's having, changing the culture, et cetera. But that this story, that immigrants are eating pets, is much darker and goes much further. Quote, consider this, he says, millions of people, and I just told you the number, millions of people now believe that immigrants are butchering their beloved cats and dogs. How will those people approach immigrants or people they think are immigrants if that's what they believe? Are we setting ourselves up for another Buffalo or El Paso mass shooting, which Jeremy just referenced a moment ago? Al, Rev, what do you I, think? I think that it is absolutely the thing that is frightening to us. I'm, I'm here in Washington today at our National Action Network office, and yesterday was in the New York office meeting with Haitian leaders by Zoom, uh, that there's genuine concern about where this could go, in, including some violence. When you're telling people from a former president of the United States, given credibility, to this outright lie, this hallucination, that there are Haitian immigrants, let's, let's not forget it. They're not just saying immigrants. They're being specific. Haitian immigrants that are eating your animals, your pets, your cats, your dogs. You're setting uh, up for somebody to do something that is horrific at worst. And at best, you're setting up a racist situation for Haitian Americans. And let's remember now, uh, Katie, that Donald Trump is the same one that called Haiti and several African countries as whole countries. He has a fixation with black countries and black people. Uh, so he didn't just say migrants are eating your, uh, uh, your pets. Haitian migrants, any black, anyone of color in Springfield, Ohio, looks like a Haitian walking down the street. You don't stop and take a, a test on their accents or look for their uh, nationality. So this is a threat to all of us, and it should be taken as such, which is why I've been talking to Haitian leaders on how we should respond in unison, black and white. So you have you have Laura Loomer, you have, over the years, there's been, I mean, there's so many, I can't name them all, but Nick Fuentes, Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk, all these people that have either been, you know, perpetuating racist or anti-Semitic or just conspiracy theories that Donald Trump has surrounded himself with. He's been around them. The Democrats have, though, had a hard time uncoupling Donald Trump and who he's surrounding himself with from, um, I guess, the supporters. When they say Donald Trump, they've argued he's a racist or they say that he's surrounding himself with racists. Sometimes or a lot of the time, Donald Trump supporters will say, hey, what are you talking about? Screw you. I'm not a racist. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You're denigrating me. You're looking down on me. So how do the Democrats point out Look who he's with. Look what he's doing. Do you want to be associated with them without painting the entire support system as racist or xenophobic or anti-Semitic, et cetera? Well, I think clearly you have to point out uh, to everyone that it is a thread throughout his career dealing with this. In the 70s, he and his father were sued by the Justice Department, not by a civil rights group. Justice Department for racial discrimination. Then you go to the late 80s, where he took out an ad, $85,000 ad, calling for the execution of five young black uh, uh, and brown men, accusing them uh, of the rape and uh, the uh, uh, brutalizing of a vicious crime that happened to a young white female. All right, fine. Uh, a lot of people felt they were guilty. They were coerced into, into confessions. But then when DNA, years later, after they had done time in jail, proved that they were not the ones, he wrote our bed saying, no, no, don't settle with them. They did it. And I think that this is the problem that uh, you've got to be able to raise to his supporters. Uh, I also think when you look at the fact that you have a consistent 
entourage of Holocaust deniers, anti-Semites, racists, and people that believe in autocracy. I don't care who's supporting them. How do you justify that this man is comfortable with that and his own actions? I do not think, for the record, that everybody that votes for Donald Trump is a racist, but I do believe every racist will vote for Donald Trump. Um, he's using immigrants to, to go after minority voters, specifically back black men, saying they're taking black jobs. Is it effective? No, I think that uh, when you look at the number of black uh, that, that have voted for him, they're not that much higher than they ought to uh, usually get with Republicans. And I think that it is insulting when he says the black men that they uh, gravitate to him because of his mug shots which in effect is rhetorically criminalizing black men. I think that it is insulting that he puts people up that have records from here back to New York and says that they are the ones that should be telling you to vote for. So I think that in many ways uh, that the poll numbers they're showing with black men are fantasies that will not go anywhere. And many, but we've never had all blacks do anything, but the margins that he gets is no different than those that uh, Republicans have gotten in the past in many cases. And I think he's going to be more disappointed this time because of things like saying Haitian immigrants are eating your cats and dogs. Even black men that have whatever differences with the Democrats don't uh, want to see that kind of thing go. And he brought it to the presidential debate on a platform that millions of people were watching. All right, Reverend Al Sharpton, thank you very much.